Yeah, I mean. Um, yeah, see, one minute. Okay. So basically, we use programming to interact with the computer. Okay. As you know, computers only understand binaries. Okay, like zero and ones. Okay, these are the binaries which are only understood by the computers, and this is known as machine language. Okay. Now we cannot able to learn binaries. Like we cannot learn a like uh, in binary language we have a in like suppose we have binary of a's. This one. Okay, we cannot learn binary language. So for communicating with a computer to give the instructions to a PC, so that is why we use programming language. Okay. Now in programming languages, we have high level language, we have mid level, and then we have this low level language. So high level means we have Python in high level. In mid level, we have C or C plus plus. And low level we have assembly. So high level means which is close to users. Okay, which is like basically close to users. And the mid level is like combination of high level and low level. And assembly is like low level is like which is close to machine. Okay, which is close to machine language. And it is close to users. Okay, like uh, Python. When we see the code of Python, Python is uh, written in English language. Like uh, we use print, we use for loop, we use while loop, we use if statement. These are all in English. So that is why it is known as high level, which is close to English language. Mid level, it is like a combination of high level and low level. And then we have assembly, which is close to machine language. Like uh, we have in assembly language, we have signs and symbols. Like uh, we have this one code. Okay. These are the, this is the code of the assembly, which is like hardly understand by the humans. So that is why Python is a high level programming language, which is usually close to uh, English language. Okay, Python is a general purpose. What is the means of general purpose is Python can be used everywhere. Okay, Python can be used in like in data science, in machine learning, in animation, in data mining, in applications, web development, software development, AI, automation, etc. So that is, that is why we can say that Python is a general purpose programming language. And what why like why Python is a general purpose and C and C all are not general purpose because why Python is a in like is a hot in is in like in trend. So basically, Python has extensible like libraries and frameworks. It has libraries and frameworks as well as modules. Okay, as we say that Python is an open source, so anyone can contribute to its source code. Okay, like in applications, we have open source. We have freeware softwares and then we have paid. Paid life, you have to pay for that. Freeware is like we, have, we can use it for free, but we cannot access its source code. Like we cannot modify its source code. And open source means we can use it free as well as we can modify its source code. So Python has lots and lots of libraries, frameworks, as well as modules. So that is why it is a general purpose. Like for, let's say, for if you want to use Python in data science, then for that we have pandas, we have numpy, we have seaborn, and etc. Okay, these are the libraries for data science. If you want to use Python in web, then we have Django for that. If you want to use Python for Android, then we have Flask for that. Okay, etc. And uh, when you want to use uh, GUI for Python, then we have printer. Automation for that we have Selenium. Okay, these all are the libraries that makes Python a general purpose language. Okay, after that, is it clear? Like why Python is a general purpose? So the Namco is the uh, a dictionary, isn't it? Namco? Django. No, it's not a dictionary. It's a Namco, framework. Namco. Namco. No, no, it's not a dictionary. It's a library. Library, okay. Yeah. No. 
पाइथन इज डायनामिक एंड हाई लेवल हाई लेवल इज क्लियर वाई पाइथन इज डायनामिक इन नेचर बिकॉज वेन एवर यू मेक अ वेरिएबल इन सी लाइक इन पाइथन सपोज यू मेक अ वेरिएबल ए इज इक्वल टू फाइव ओके वेन यू आर कोडिंग इन सी यू हैव टू डिफाइन यू हैव टू टेल द पाइथन और द इंटरप्रेटर डेट यू आर स्टोरिंग अ नंबर फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू हैव टू राइट इन ए इज इक्वल टू फाइव For using C and C plus one, or in any other languages, you have to define what what like what type of value you are storing. But in Python, you can store it freely. Like you don't need to define it or like what type of value you are storing. Whether 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 it is a number or it is a string. Okay, so that is why Python is a dynamic in nature. High level interpreted programming. Interpreted means one we have interpreted, and second we have scripting. Okay, so Python is both scripting as well as interpretive programming. Scripting means in here first interpreted when you like open the Python IDE. Let's say Python IDE. Okay. Okay, suppose I write here print. Hello, what? Okay, and enter. See when you write a code and it execute the code line by line. So this this is known as interpreted programming. Like whenever you write a code and the code will execute it line by line. Okay, it's executing line by line. And scripting is like whenever your code is executing as a whole. Whenever like you add fifty lines of code. Okay, and then you are you save your file and then you are running it. So this is like you are running as a whole. Okay. Like all all the code lines together and interpreted, you are executing line by line. That is why Python is like interpreted as well as scripting. Python is easy to learn, yeah, and powerful because of its libraries. Versatile, like you can also use Python as a scripting, like you can write malware, payloads, etc. Uh, from Python because of its libraries. Okay, Python syntax is dynamic, like it is easy to understand. Okay. and uh, python support multi programming pattern like uh, we can use python in everywhere okay and then python is a cross platform we can use python in like in every platform like in windows mac android ios and uh, mac then python is a case sensitive okay which means for python a and this a both are different okay This A and this A both are different. Why Python is a case sensitive? Can anyone tell me? Like why Python is case sensitive? Like for us, this A and this A, this small case and okay. this capital A, both are same. But for Python, this A and this small A and uh, upper case both are different. Why? Why we can say that Python are is case sensitive? Can anyone? Ma'am, mm, it is it is case sensitive. Actually, why it is case sensitive? Yeah, why it is case sensitive? I'm asking you. I don't know, ma'am. Okay, so because see, as I told you. Machines only understand binaries. Okay, so A is equal to the binary word A is this, and this capital A, this binary is for example this. Okay, so Python only, uh, so your machine only understand the binary languages. So this A, the binary of this A, and this binary of A, both are different. That is why we have different different upper cases different for machine and the lower cases different for machine. Okay, then Python is again dynamic in nature because You don't need to compile the Python code. Okay, means when you, whenever you writing a C and or C plus plus code. Okay, let's suppose you are writing a C and C plus plus code. You first need to code it, then you need to compile the code, and then you need to run the code. Okay, so there is a three process. First you need to code it, then you need to compile it. Okay, compile means convert dot C code into dot exe code. Okay, and then you need to run it. But in Python. we can only code and then run let's say okay there is no need to compile it python interpreter compiles it automatically 
Okay, that is why Python is also dynamic in nature. We don't need to compile it again and again. Okay. Then after that, we have Python 2 and Python 3. Previously, we have only Python 2. Now, we are using Python 3.10 version. Okay, and so on. So, what is the difference between Python 2 and 3? So Python, Python 2 has limited libraries, okay, but Python 3 has like unlimited libraries, like many libraries, okay. Then, whenever you write Python code, you write print, space, quotations, and hello, okay. This is the line of Python 2, and whenever you write, write Python in print, Python, print, you you, uh, you use parentheses, this round brackets. Hello. Point. Okay. This is like the basic difference. Uh, the syntax difference, basically. You can say that the syntax difference. Okay. You don't need to use parentheses here, but you, you need to use parentheses. Okay. Then we use raw input here. Raw underscore input. Okay. Here. And in here, we only use input. Okay. These are the like difference between Python 2 and 3. And all, all like all the companies are currently using Python 2. Okay. Python history. Python was invented by Kudu Van Rossum in 1991. Okay. And the Python name, Python is derived from the language AVC. Okay. AVC programming. It is derived from AVC. Then Python, like why we call Python as Python? Because uh, it is chosen by the owner, uh, creator of the developer of the Python with, uh, with a, like uh, from his favorite BBC comedy show. Okay, that is Monty Python's Flying Circus. Okay, so he decided to pick up the name Python for his newly created programming language. Okay, is it clear like why we call Python as Python? Okay, no. Why learn Python? Because Python is easy to use. These are the basic features of Python. Easy to use, expressive, interpreted, OOPs language, object oriented, open source. Okay, it's, it can be extensible. Like we can add many libraries to, to it. Okay, and then GUI, integrated, integrated and embedded. It, mean, it means we can embed the course, uh, code of Python with other language. Like we can embed C and Python together then we have Python and Java and Python together then we have Python. Okay, we can like embed the code of Python with other languages. In dynamic memory allocation, we don't need to specify where to store the variables or functions. Python automatically, uh, dynamically or like store its, uh, do its memory allocation process. Then wide range of libraries and frameworks. And where is Python used? Data science, data mining, and these are the platform in which python are used okay. these are in domains then we have python popular frameworks and libraries for web we have django flask ramid cherry pie okay for gui we have kinder pygtk pyqt etc for machine learning we have tensorflow pytorch scikit-learn etc then for mathematics we have numpy and pandas etc okay is it clear the introduction of python any doubt regarding this? I will share you the documents up after the class and the video. Okay. So, is there any doubt or is it clear? We can move forward. It's clear, ma'am. Yes, clear. Now, installation of Python, how we can install it? For Python installation, you have to go to Python, download. You can click on here and just click this button. Okay, download Python. Click on here. Okay, for the installation process, okay. when you install your Python, there's an option we came add two path. Okay, and the square bracket, oh sorry, uh, the uh, the square box. You have to tick this option. Add to path. Okay, and then you can install it. It is like uh, straightforward. Only just to uh, tick this box. Okay, like uh, add to path. And then we will use IDEs. 
Okay, IDEs means integrated development environment. Okay, why we use IDE? Because when we use Python, Python like as a Python code, the Python interface is like uh, this. Is. Okay, when we code in here, this is like uh, somewhat. First of all, it is boring. Okay, and and then it is like it has limitations. So we will use IDEs like uh, we have Visual Studio Code, which we call this code, and then we have I jump and atom, Jupiter, spider, etc. Okay, so we have many IDs. So for this, like for this course, we will use VS Code. Okay, so you have to go to search for Visual Studio Code, and then in here you have to click on here. Okay, now download it for Windows. Or Mac or any operating system you are using. Okay, the installation is also straightforward. Now, after using installing the VS Code, go to the open the VS Code and then you will see this interface. Okay, first you have to go to extensions. This one. Okay, extensions. There you have to search for Python extensions. First you have to download Python. Okay. Then click on here Python by Microsoft. Here. Okay, click on install it. After Python, you have to install Prettier. Okay, this one. Prettier. Okay, this will format your code. Okay, and you have to install it. After that, you have to install icons. Okay, these are very useful extensions. Okay, just click on install here. And after that, run this one. Okay, install this code runner. These are the four extensions that you need to run. Is it clear? First one Python, second one run, third one that icons. Okay, and then code read here. Okay. After installing these modules, we start your VS Code. Okay, we start it. Now this way, this is the like interface of the VS Code. Then cross it, and then go to File, Preferences, and then Color Theme. Okay, this one. You can like change the theme of your VS Code, like uh, in whichever you are comfortable. Okay, like NG. Now, control B. Okay, control B to hide this panel and control B to like show this panel. Okay. Control plus B. Okay, to hide and to show this like right column. Then, if you want to make a new file, okay, first, first make a new fo folder here. Like in a desktop, right click, new folder. Let's name it Python. One enter. Now drag this folder to VS Code here. Okay, this will open your folder in the VS Code. Now we have this Python here in this right side. The, okay, so here you have to go to new file. This is for the new file, new folder. We refresh. Okay, then you have to make a if you want to make a new file and click on it. New file and then name it. Let's say file one dot py. Okay, the extension of Python is dot py. Okay, if you want to make a folder here, you can click on folder number one. Okay, this is folder number one, and then we have Python py. Okay, if you want to save the file, Control S save. Okay, and if you want to open any existing file, then file. Open file from here, okay, and file then anything, okay. And then if you want to run the file, suppose you have write print. Hello, wait. Control is save, and then click on in here run. See hello. Okay, or you can run it from terminal. We are click on terminal here, and. Uh, Type Python and the name of your file. 
पाई वन फोर पी वाई एंड ओके हेलो यू कैन रन इन इधर वे चार्जेस सो इज इट क्लियर मुकेश एंड सिक्स को इज इट क्लियर यस मैम इट इज क्लियर ठीक है इंस्टॉलेशन प्रोसेस वी हैव आई हैव ऑलरेडी इंस्टॉल्ड सिक्स को व्हाट अबाउट यू so so far so good um with the installation process um all the things that are installed are we going to get a those text files that tells us what what needs to be installed okay okay no so python introduction is completed now we have python fundamentals okay first <coughs> let me tell you about python variables okay what are python variables what are python variables anyone can answer python variables ma'am yeah munivel what is python variables um uh, python variables are like a containers like yeah. x equal to 5 uh, y equal to like any name with bracket then as the thing yeah so variables are like containers okay that store the information yeah it is stores your value okay like a is equal to 10 b is equal to let's say 11 okay like that now there there are some rules for naming the variables that we call naming conventions okay this is known as rules for naming variables we have to follow some rules for naming the variables first rule is spaces are not allowed okay spaces are not allowed in your variable spaces are not allowed this but in instead of b equal to 11 i can put any name isn't it sorry uh you put the a equal to 10 b equal to 11 instead of 11 i can put any name in here yeah. isn't it okay. yeah we are like talking about variables okay yep. the b is equal to 11 11 is a value of the variable okay so spaces are not allowed but if you want to use a space you can use underscore so underscore are allowed like for example you cannot name a variable like last space name is equal to can see that first name is equal to you cannot name like this okay first space name but you can use first underscore name okay this is equal to python Okay. Then third, special characters are not allowed. Special characters are not allowed, like uh, at the rate hash and dollar percentage, etc. Okay. For example, you cannot name like this. First is equal to name. Okay. Okay, this is wrong. You cannot use special characters. Fourth, you cannot. Okay, so you cannot start the variable name with a number. Like you cannot one num is equal to one. 
you cannot start your variable name with a number okay but you can use number in the middle and in the last like you can do this like num1 is equal to 10 comma you can num1 or num2 is equal to 11 okay you can do this like this but numbers are not allowed in the starting okay fifth rule reserve words reserve words are not allowed means you cannot name reserve words and the reserve words we are like print if else for while these have the special meanings for the python interpreter okay like you cannot do this print is equal to hello okay you cannot do this like print is a special keyword or a special word for the python okay you cannot name this as a variable Okay, now the last one six always name the variable okay always name the variable or always name your variable related to your value for example let's say you are you are, you are taking an input as a name okay then name is equal to Okay, or name this name is nothing. Or if you are like taking as a language, then you can say language is equal to Python. Okay, so always name your variable related to a value. Suppose you are taking a number, then say num1 is equal to 10, num2 is equal to 11. Okay, so always name the variable related to your values or the, whatever the values you are storing. Okay, you cannot or it is not a good practice to name like uh, a is equal to python okay. like no one can understand it okay. is it clear the naming conventions of variables these yes clear? yes okay yes now tell me in <coughs> No, this is a valid in uh, is this like a valid variable or invalid? Valid or invalid? This one variable name. Invalid ma'am. Invalid ma'am. Why? Because we 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 have used space in it. Yeah, we are using the space. Okay. Mineral, is it valid or invalid? Invalid. Invalid. Okay. Okay, Cisco, is it invalid or valid? Invalid. Why? Uh, because uh, this language, you cannot put down the last name or something. Language. No, no. We can put any value. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, might be in the underscore. That's the reason. No, you can allow underscore in the variable name, but you cannot allow the space in the variable name. Okay. Wow. So this is what is variable. the space in here or where after the equal? Where, where is the See, space? This, oh, this doesn't matter. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. This doesn't matter whether you put space before the equal sign or after the equal sign. What is matter is the name of the variable. Are you like putting the variable the space here or here? And like here or here. So this, this is matter. Okay. If you're putting the underscore, then this is a valid variable name. Okay. Okay, okay. So you and, make a space after the last that's reason. Yeah, you can make a, like many spaces as, as you want, but this is not a good practice. Always keep only one space here. Okay. Okay. Just okay. one and here one space. If you, even if you don't put put any space then it will not give you any, any error it is also right correct okay. so but it's a good practice to put a space here now one more thing these rules are only for the variables not for the values okay these rules are only for this variable not for this value you can put anything in the value like you can use any 
special characters you can like yes. use print function but you have to put inside the quotations okay these are the quotations you have to put so these rules are only for the variable name this yes. variable name okay you can put any value as you want like you can add many spaces at, as you can okay you can use any underscore as you want you can use number etc okay but for only only for the value okay you cannot use any of these for the variable name is it clear Okay. Yep. Now we have data types. First, we have a string. What are strings? Uh, strings, ma'am, uh, where we can assign anything like name and uh, some not where which are not integers and. Uh, Okay. Mineral, what are strings? Mm, like an integer float, that sort of string? No. Any set of characters. Any statement. That are enclosed inside quotations. Inside quotations. A double quotation, okay, okay. Double quotations, we can use single quotations also. Single as well. And we can use triple as well. Like like a uh, first name uh, quotation, then last name quotation. That's yeah. Right. No, these are the variable name. We, you cannot use quotations in here, but you have to use quotation in the value. Okay. okay. Means this, this is the variable and this is the value. Okay. Value. And yeah. you are using the quotations inside the value, in values. For example, Python. Okay, this is a string. One one five. This is also a string. Okay, any character like any special character, any number, any float, any complex number inside the quotations are known as strings. Okay, this can be a double quotation. You can also put a single quotation. Okay, and you can also use triple quotations. Okay, anything. Is it clear like what are strings? Any character, like whether it is a number, whether it is a special character, any value that are inside quotations are known as strings. Okay, now these are yeah. these this is not a number for Python, it is a only a character for Python, not a number. Like whenever you add yeah. two strings, like we have one plus one, the answer will be one one, not two. Okay, because yeah. these are the strings, not numbers. Uh, okay, okay. okay. Now we have numbers. In numbers, we have in float and complex. Float. Okay. Complex. In in we have all the non-decimal numbers. Okay. For examples, one, two, three, four, like forty-four, like this. And for the float, we have decimal. Point, numbers. Yeah, decimal number. One point Only two. point numbers. Point number. Yeah. Etc. And complex, what a complex number? Combination of real image, real number, imaginary number, know. like one plus two j. Okay, this one is a real number and j is a imaginary number. number yeah. We hardly use complex number in the Python code. Python. Okay, mostly we use int and float. Okay, is it clear? Yep. Then we have boolean value. Yeah. Which is only true and false. False. And make sure whenever you are using the boolean value in the Python code, always T should be capital and F should be capital. Okay, that's it. Otherwise, it, it will throw an error if you put two like this. Okay. Then after that, we have many more. Okay. First, understand this is strings, numbers, and booleans. Okay. No. No, another thing we have to now the important operators we have which is also known as arithmetic operators. Okay, arithmetic operators we have plus minus 
Multiply. Minus. Divide. Multiply. Divide. Okay. Which one is float and which one is in? Which one is float division and which one is in division? Munnan, which is float and which is integer? Out of these two. Sorry, what's your question? Which is int int division and which is float division? Like we have two values, na int and float. Okay, yeah. and which one is int and which one is float? Out of mm. these. See, okay. The first one is the I think float. Ah, yeah. First one is a float. And second one is a int. Integer. Okay. For example, when you divide, let's say five divide two, this will give you the output two point five. Right. Okay. Yeah. And when you same divide five divided by two, it will only give you two. Okay. Yeah. It will not show you the decimal part. This is int because this is integer, and this is float. Okay, this is shows you the decimal part, and this this will show you the non-decimal part. Okay, is it clear? Yep. Okay. And this is modulus, which known as percent sign. Okay. Modulus, it will show it will give you the remainder part. And this is exponent. It's more like power. Okay, it is like power power. No, modulus is like when you have five modulus two. What will be the answer? One. Okay, because two two is a four, and uh, the five minus four one. So one should one will be the remainder, and mm -hmm. only modulus 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 will show you the remainder part. Okay, and exponent when you take five exponent two, it means five into five, twenty five. Okay. Means five power of two. Same with like four, eight, seven. So four times seven times four. Okay, like four into like this. Is it clear? And the answer should okay. Yeah. Modulus. Now how to code it? Let's go to interpreter. Yeah. Now make a two variable. Okay, let's say num one is equal to let's say uh five, and num two is equal to two. Now print num one plus num two. This is division, this is double, and this is modulus. And then we have exponent. Okay, these all are the arithmetic operators. And when you run it, it will show you the output. Okay, run it from here. See. Okay. Is it clear? Yeah. Like how we can put it. No. Then we have type casting. Okay, we will discuss later. We have input function. Input function. This input function is used to take input from the user. Is used to take input value from the user. Okay, like in here. Like in here, we are typing the value manually. Okay, like assigning five to number. What if we want to take a value from the user? Then for that, we use input function. Okay, let's say num one is equal to input, and then whatever quotations enter your name. Then quotations close. Okay, and then bracket close. Or we can say that its name. Okay, always put quotation inside the parentheses, and whatever you write inside this, it is it will display as it is. 
like when you like enter your name then enter your name will be displayed when you like enter your name a lot of space then it will print it like this only like as it is so when, whenever you write anything inside the quotations it will display as it is okay input then you can print the input like is <coughs> going to input and then enter your name space then print name and save it and then run it so run from the term enter name okay so name will be printed if you want to enter something with a name like let's say hello put comma okay after you write hello and then hello will be printed with a name enter your name it's not clear hello hope you okay lights is it clear you can also put to uh, space oh, you can also support like uh, that uh, plus sign but uh, like comma is more suitable than plus okay then and remember input always take input as a string okay so if you are like calculating something you have to convert it into a number and comment it out like if you want to take num1 is equal to input enter the number and you can say num2 is equal to input and the number second and then print number plus number and then run it okay number 1 2 so this is 22 instead of 4 so remember input always take input in the form of string okay so for the python it is 2 plus 2 which is like we are plusing like adding the two string <coughs> together then 22 now so you have to convert this input string into number okay so this, this one is, the this one the float which one no this is string oh, okay is string you are writing inside quotation stuff so input yeah. always take input in the form of strings not in the form of float or int if you want okay. to convert it into float or int then you have to put before int input you have to put input oh, sorry int mm. and in here also int oh, okay okay oh, yes read yeah. this int is yeah and then you can run it enter the number 2 and 2 now the answer is 4 okay you can also use float here float okay if you want like de decimal values flow then same 2 and 2 4.0 okay you can also use float and you can also use int is it clear now yep this is go is it clear yes ma'am okay. टोकन्स एनिमन के नाम से मुनिर Ma'am, uh, so tokens are like uh, some special characters assignment which will uh, give uh, special permissions to uh, perform a task. Okay. So basically, tokens are the smallest value of a Python code. Okay, like for a human being, a cell is the smallest unit. For a body, same as a token is the smallest unit for a Python. Everything is in is in Python is a token. Like whenever you are using a name, name is a token. Okay, you are using the print. Print is a token. So everything in Python is a token. Token is like a character set, which includes all the characters, like from A to Z, small A to Z, 
and from every value and all the special characters. Okay, so tokens are like the smallest value in Python. White spaces all are the and the ASA Unicode. These all are the characters are the tokens. So the uh, special symbol as well. The yeah, token. all the yeah, all the things are tokens. Now tokens are the smallest individual unit in the Python. Okay, then after token we have keywords. Now in the token category we have keywords, we have identifiers, we have yeah. So for the keywords, keywords are the reserved words for the Python, which have the special meaning for the Python interpreter. Like we have seen print. Print has a special meaning for Python because it is used to print something. Okay, we have 33 keywords. Like we have true, true and false are the boolean value, none, none is a special keyword. And as I said, def class continue. These all are the these all are the special uh, special keywords which have which have like special meanings for the Python. Now we cannot name it as a variable, okay? Because these are reserved words. Whenever you name it as a variable, the Python interpreter will confuse. Like uh, you are using it as a variable and throws you an error, okay? So these are special keywords. And print also. No, identifiers, identifiers are nothing but all the names that you are giving to a variable. Okay, like this name, name is an identifier. We, we also know, it is also known as identifier in variable. Okay, identifiers are this. Whenever you name something to the, in the Python code, suppose you are naming a variable, you are naming a function, you are creating your own function, then these all the things are known as identifiers, which is named by you. Okay. Then Python identifier case sensitive because uh, okay, I told you one more thing. Then values we have values, literals and values. We have string literals that you have seen. The character literals like the single character and the numeric literals. In numerics we have integer, float, and complex. Okay, and the boolean value we had already seen. Th these are the literals. Basically, these are the data types, but uh, they come under the category of literals. Okay. Then we have the special literals like none, which is nothing. Okay, none value. Then we have literal collections where we have multiple collections like we have list, we have tuple, we have dictionary, and we have set. Okay, set is yeah set here. Okay, I will tell you what are four of four of these data types. Okay, so basically let me check. now for the literal collections we have list. Okay, list are the list are enclosed inside square brackets. Okay, let's say apple, cap, cherry, and then we have tips. Now, one more thing you cannot assign multiple values to a one variable. Let's say you have name is equal to Python, you put name is equal to Python. So, you cannot put multiple values like uh, Java also or C or C++ also. Okay, you cannot put, put like you cannot assign multiple values to a single variable. So for that you can like name one comma name two. You can name one comma name two comma and name three is equal to in the names like Python comma java comma and then c plus plus okay so python is uh, like the value of name one java is name two and c plus or java name three so you can do this like this but you cannot name one is equal to this one this you cannot assign these all values to a single variable okay is it clear yep okay Yes. So now for assigning the multiple values to a single variable, you, you use uh, literal collections, okay. which includes list, which is like you can enclose inside square brackets. Now in the list, there's a benefit in collections, literal con like collections. You can store multiple types of values, like uh, two. You can store strings with numbers. You can store boolean value with uh, with all these data types okay it means you can store any type of data type in the single list okay even you can input list inside list okay like we have list and then we have one two three like that okay and four. 
this is like the benefit you can even in, in, like put a set inside list dictionary inside list let it okay so you can input any data type at a same time inside a single list this is known as list okay inside square brackets then we have tuple which is inside parenthesis okay same with the tuple okay then we have dictionaries tuple underscore one okay then we have dictionaries is equal to equal basis okay dictionaries are key value pairs let's say name colon five okay comma let's say name two colon java etc okay so this is name is a key Python is a value. So this is one key pair value. Then name two is a key. Java is a value. Then this is second key pair value. Okay. Then after dictionary, so, we have set. So, uh, uh, yeah. These all are collections like list, uh, tuple, dictionary, set. Yeah, all these are, are all collections. neutral collections. Okay. These are all neutral collections. Then set, set inside curly braces also. And then we have this same data set. Now, what is the difference between list, tuple, dictionary, and set? The like what is the difference? Muni run? Yeah. Yeah. So the, like a dictionary uh, name is Python and name two is Java, but in here, uh, Apple, uh, the separate, like uh, Apple is separate, chain is separate. Okay. Is separate. And. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, together, including the number. Okay. And uh, dictionary can also include numbers. And also. Boolean as well. Like dictionaries can also include numbers. Number, yeah. Okay. So, list is mutable or immutable? Uh, immutable. Uh, mutable, mutable. Okay. Mutable. Tuple? Tuple, immutable. Uh, immutable. Dictionaries? Mutable. Munira? Immutable. 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 Really? Yeah. It's mutable. Yeah. Oh, mutable. Set? Uh, this one immutable. Set, set is also mutable. Sorry? Set? Set, set. set immutable. Set is immutable. Immutable. Okay. Basically, set is both mutable and immutable. Okay. Let me tell you why. Immutable. At the same time. And another thing, they have frozen set. They are mutable or immutable? Frozen set. That is immutable. Mutable. Immutable. Mutable or immutable? Immutable, no? Immutable. immutable. Okay. So, what is the meaning of mutable and immutable? Mutable is changeable. Oh, yeah. Mutable changeable. And mutable is unchangeable. It's unchangeable. Yeah. So, mutable, like if we can change the elements of the list. Like we can change the, these are the elements. Apple, cherry, grapes. These are the elements of the list. Okay, we can change the value of the elements. Like we can replace apple with banana. We can replace true with false. We can like replace this list with a number also. Okay, this is known as like changeable. In tuple, yeah. we cannot change it. Like tuple is a pure immutable. You cannot change apple with banana. You cannot change cherry with any number. Okay, you, even you cannot change any element in tuple. That is why it is known as immutable. Means unchangeable. Okay. In dictionary, you can change the value as well. Okay, that is why it is mutable. Now, yes. set, set is why set is both mutable and immutable. Can anyone answer? Why set is both mutable and immutable? Yesterday I told you. Like you can uh, change that uh, because to banana, but uh, true or false, you cannot change that. Okay, Mukesh. Ma'am, uh, we can change the values, but we cannot uh, alter some new fields into it. You are seeing opposite. 
ओके वी कैन वी कैन न्यू फील्ड्स बट वी कैन नॉट एडिट द एग्जिस्टिंग फील्ड या Yes, yes. You can add that, but you cannot change that. Yeah, we can add the value in the. We can add. We can remove the value. Like we can remove yeah. grapes. We can remove one, two, three, etc. But if we cannot update the value, like we cannot update apple with banana. We cannot update no, 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 update okay. cherry with another thing. Okay. So the elements of the set are immutable, but the set itself is mutable. Okay. So let me write it. The elements. Are immutable. Okay, but the set itself is mutable. Okay, means you can add, you can remove it. But in table, but in table you cannot uh, like. Uh, but in table, table is pure immutable. Either you, uh, uh, neither you can like uh, update the value, nor you can like add or remove any value. Okay. Now frozen set, frozen set. If like set is mutable and immutable, so that is why we have frozen set to make set a full mutable one. In frozen set, you cannot like uh, update the value or you cannot add or remove the value. Okay, that is why frozen set is immutable. Like it is pure immutable. Introduced. Okay. Yeah. Well, pure immutable. And these are like half mutable and half immutable. And dictionary, it is immutable and tuple. It is immutable. Okay. Is it clear? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So operators are left and variables are completed. So I will show you the notes. Okay. Okay. Is it enough? For, is it okay? This is my fault. Okay. So any doubt? Like regarding all these modules. No, all good. Like anything. So far, nothing. Okay, I will share the notes. You can go through it, and then if you find any doubt, you can ask ask me to. Okay. All right. No okay. 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 Cisco, okay. is it fine? Like any doubt? I share the the video recording. Yeah, I will share you the recording. Okay. Okay. Uh, see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye, Bupya. Uh, bye. 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 bye.